welcome back to my channel adhyan with flow guys in our previous video na we already discuss about dna one by one i am repeating same thing dna is a genetic material or not it is a genetic material second property is what it is a double helical structure third property is what this is made up with phosphate group sugar group and nitrogen base commonly we call it as a nucleotide all right they present in complementary form next thing is what nitrogen base is attached by hydrogen bond guys two hydrogen bond present between a and t three hydrogen bond present between g and c another property is what a and g is what a and g is purine what is c and t c and t is pyrimidine yes or not means guys nitrogen base na nitrogen base divided into two parts purine and pyrimidine Py purine is further divided into two part adenine and guanine and pyrimidine type is what cytosine thymine and uracil uracil present in rna okay guys now we know everything about dna next thing is what what is this what is this circular structure we call it as a histone octamer histone octamer let me discuss here what do you understand by histone octamer and how they will form guys according to their name octamer it means four you can say eight unit present i am giving you more detail guys this histone octamer is made up with histone protein and what kind of these protein are h2 a h2 b h3 h4 guys i repeating that histone octamer is made up with histone protein what is the name of these histone protein h2 a h2 b h3 h4 i repeat h2 a h2 b h3 and h4 now guys how these four protein make octamer form how these four protein make octamer means eight units because these are only four protein how they make eight protein guys each one present in pair in number each one is present in pair means h2 a is two in number h2 b is also two in number h3 also in two number and h4 is also two in number two 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 how many eight means histone octamer is made up with four kind of histone protein we can say it as a histone octamer they present in pair in number means one h2 a front side and another h2 a is back side front side another h2 b is back side underestimate nahi karna h4 h2 b 2 a guys now this is the octamer what kind of octamer histone octamer now how they arrange guys this is the histone octamer i am representing in this manner i am representing in this manner now what uh, happen with these histone octamer and how they form nucleosome guys i already told you na dna never ever present in a free form they coil their self they coil their self understand guys this whole histone octamer now the protein i told you na octamer is present uh, octamer is formed by histone histone is what protein now protein is made up with amino acid now what kind of amino acid contribute these uh, proteins maximum amount of lysine and arginine these amino acid contribute the formation of what protein which kind of protein histone protein so they are positively charged 
so histone protein are what positively charged if you study physics then you know that positive positive charge repel each other and positive and negative charge attract each other now dna is what dna is negatively charged no one tells you these thing no one tell you histone octamer is what positively charged protein why because their protein is made up with amino acid and these amino acids are what lysine and arginine and they are positive amino acids because they have positive charge on their group. if you study chemistry then you easily know that who carry positive charge and who carry negative charge so guys dna is negative charge how ma'am how you can say that dna is negatively charged guys i told you that uh, dna is made up with phosphate sugar group and nitrogen this phosphate we indicate in this form look at here this is negative charge so guys dna is negative charge and what they do they twist they coil this dna in this manner in this manner further on so they overlap they coil they hide histone protein and after coiling 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 they make chromosomes but guys if we can't stop this dna here so they can easily unfold again so here is another protein is also found guys girls carry sari yeah girls carry sari and they pin up their sari okay okay without pin up now wo sari khul jayegi bhai okay so here is another protein his name is what h1 but they are not included by histone octamer they are outside of histone so this is the h1 okay here to here one portion we call it as a nucleosome so this is all about your nucleosome now here is another term beads on string guys here dna look like beads wait oh wait beads understand better understand look at here beads on a string look like beads on a string so this is the packaging of dna in this form dna will present not in free form not in free form here is what euchromatin and heterochromatin guys what you understand by euchromatin and heterochromatin guys look at here this is the chromosome here is something dark portion and here is light so this darkish portion dark we call it as a heterochromatin because here maximum dna is condensed but here less dna is present okay here is highly condensed in center part and periphery part yeah they are condensed but less compared than center part and this light portion is what we call u chromatin guys chromatin uh, don't be panic chromatin dna chromatin okay same same okay chromatin this is the unfold structure they pack their self and they make chromatid chromatid make their self chromosome that's it this is the chromatin simple guys one stand is what chromatid and chromosome simple okay now how scientists they prove that dna is a genetic material okay let's discuss one by one first of all let's discuss about griffith experiment frederick griffith what they do what they do to confirm that dna is genetic material dna put uh, sorry many scientists put their effort to prove that dna is genetic material okay let's discuss their experiment so now what did he do guys he take a bacteria streptococcus pneumonia who cause pneumonia disease okay now what he do he takes mice he takes bacteria and now what he do he makes two strain of bacteria s strain and r strain s strain is what smooth strain r strain is what rough strain s strain contain what a polysaccharide structure but they don't contain these kind of polysaccharide structure means they have protein like coat okay now what did he do case 1 okay here case 1 he take s strain and inject into the mice 
and mice become die what he do next step case 2 he takes r strain and he inject into the mouse i mean mice but mice is life all right okay there is no conclusion okay one strain is go and die and okay all i can say that this is because of this next thing is what he do again he take mice okay he take bacteria and he take a heat system now what he do now what he do he what he do he take two strain of bacteria s strain again and r strain s strain is what same protein coating structure and r strain is not a protein coating structure now what he do he heat them he heated this thing now what he found when he heat as a strain and inject into the mice this is live means bacteria has pneumonia causing factor die after heating this thing because in as a strain they have polysaccharide coating okay when we inject into the mice na mice die because of pneumonia but after heating as a strain after heating as a strain and inject into the mouse mouse is life mice is life means after heating as a strain their material their coating material their polysaccharide material their protein mucus thing is dead and then we inject into the mice na so then mice is life now what do he do okay he takes as it is this thing he take as it is this experiment but he also take r strain also and then plus r strain plus this complete experiment he inject into the mice and mice should die due to pneumonia it means r have something this kind of material who passes on generation to generation and these thing never die at small heat temperature guys remember protein rna and dna low protein if we provide 40 degree celsius to 50 degree celsius temperature now they easily degrade if we provide 50 degree to 60 degree temperature then rna will degrade but if we provide beyond 72 degree celsius guys no one can live here guys look at here 72 degree celsius temperature i can die in 40 degree celsius temperature guys in rajasthan no? beyond 50 55 our protein will degrade our protein degrade because they can't can't maintain their structure in this much temperature but dna maintain their structure dna maintain their structure no one can affect little bit heat no one can affect it. dna if you give 72 degree celsius temperature 76 degree temperature uh, celsius temperature then dna start melting so mouse is die it means all strain transport their material in generation to generation and now next thing is what biochemical characterization of transforming principle who give this theory avery mcleod mccarthy avery mcleod and mccarthy these three scientists what they do first of all they what they purified it protein dna and rna i already explained this thing okay what they do they identify protein in from the cell dna from the nucleus rna from the cell guys this is cell na always in a nucleus dna is present and here is protein and rna is present and now what do they do next from where they isolate as cells guys further na scientists will discover how they die and all and th- uh, th- they are scientists come and they discover how uh, the mouse will die due to r guys they purified protein from cell rna from cell dna from cell how guys this is not a simple process this is not a simple process guys if you want a protein rna and dna what you do take cell tissue mash up degrade this thing degrade this thing and what they do if you want protein then you have to add some protease enzyme so they degrade what they break down they break down what protein into amino acids into amino acid if you want rna then add some rna so they can easily break down rna if you want dna then add dna then you get guys then you get what 
if you add dna is now when then you get dna in nucleotide forms and nucleotide is made up with phosphate group sugar group and nitrogen base simple now another thing is what the genetic material is dna guys two scientists hershey and chase what he do he worked with virus this virus they can easily infect bacteria we call it as a bacteriophage guys those kind of structure who in fact bacteria we call it as a bacteriophage phage means engulf you can engulf which thing bacteria bacteria engulfed by bacteriophage assume na guys assume this is the bacteria this is the what bacteria i am writing here bacteria and now this bacteria got infected by what bacteriophage hi ha ha and they release their genetic material inside the inside the what inside the what bacteria bacteria already have their genetic material and they inject their genetic material now what happen okay now what happen take into the media that media are radioactive by radioactive by phosphorus and sulfur this is providing media so bacteria can easily grow these are nutrients for bacteria now here what happen with bacteria bacteriophage inject their genetic material and this genetic material will fuse with bacteria genetic material now what happen in next they are combined and this is the what bacteriophage genetic material and this is the bacteria genetic material now after researching of these material what scientists will found they found phosphorus radioactivity so now again this thing is proved that protein is not genetic material dna is genetic material why because dna is made up with three thing phosphorus so we can found phosphorus label thing maximum in this genetic material sugar group and nitrogen base so again this thing is proven that yeah dna is genetic material dna take uh, have na phosphorus group sulfur and nitrogen base so their container is rich in what phosphorus sulfur phosphorus sulfur so phosphorus sulfur so phosphorus taken by bacteria that's it okay now let's take a description sorry describe explanation about hershey and chase experiment look at here i take one bacteriophage but labeled with what radioactive sulfur i am taking another bacteriophage with radioactive phosphorus phosphorus is present, present in where dna dna contained phosphorus sugar and nitrogen base next step what i do i co i radioactive this coating part from sulfur and for in this bacteriophage what i do i radioactive their genetic material with phosphorus now this bacteriophage infect this bacteria this bacteriophage infect this bacteria now what happen after infection they infect they transport their genetic material inside the bacteria now what happen if we purified this bacteria if purified this bacteria what we get sulfur containing from their coat and here is we detect genetic material that are coated by they are contain what phosphorus labeled thing radioactive labeled thing here coating part guys not genetic material here is a coating part contain sulfur radioactivity here is genetic material contain phosphor so we again have clue that dna is genetic material okay guys that's all for now in our next video we will discuss about difference between dna and rna we will meet in our next video so don't forget to subscribe my channel adhyan with flow and keep smiling and revision 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 and please read your book okay